Nothingness is the solution of the strong. Only the very, very strong and the very, very re resilient and the very, very enlightened in the truest sense of the word can accept that they are not even in the position to accept nothingness. But I'll be shocked if there are more than 36 people like that in the world. According to Jewish mysticism, there are 36 people like this in the world. Nothingness is boundaries. Boundaries. What is a boundary? What is a healthy psychological boundary? It's the re realization that this is where I end and the world begins. This is far more important than how rich you are, how famous you are, and what is your position among the other lobsters. Be you and only you. Become a nothing socialist so that you become everything individually. You can be a multi-billionaire, you can be a president, you can be anything, a rock star. Are you happy? Are you happy? We are living in this transition phase between psychotic narratives and narcissistic narratives because all our psychotic narratives failed. Religion failed, communism failed, Nazism failed, uh, capitalism failed, liberal democracy is failing, science is failing. Science is a, is a psychotic, of course, narrative. The science worships, science worships reason. No one gets out alive. From the moment we are born, we are subject to a death verdict. We are waiting in death row, called Earth, to be executed by the Grim Ripper at a time of his choosing, at a place of his choice. So you see, there are three ways to cope with existence. One is psychosis, one is narcissism, and one is what Jordan Peterson erroneously calls nihilism. Nihilism is an ideology with a doctrine, with dogmas, with axioms, so it's the wrong word. What he was trying to say was nothingness. Psychosis, narcissism, and nothingness. Psychosis is when we generate internal objects and then pretend that they are external. We invent God and we pretend that he exists. We invent, we come up, we conjure the nation state, and then we die for it. We adopt beliefs and values, and we defend them in bloodshed and battles. We paint a flag, and then we plant it on a barren island, having sacrificed 70,000 human lives to get there. So, psychosis, the best definition of psychosis, is when we confuse internal objects with external objects, when we think that internal objects are actually external. When we have faith in God, when we fight for our country, when we defend our values, when we sacrifice for our beliefs, this is to confuse internal objects, inventions, concoctions, narratives, scripts, fiction with reality. Because I have a big surprise for you. There's no such thing as God or nation state. The flag is nothing but a piece of fabric. Beliefs and values are culture dependent, period dependent, society dependent. Anything that is dependent is not real. Beliefs and values are invented by individuals or collectives. And then everyone treats them as though they have an existence of their own. That's one solution. And the vast majority of humanity adhere to this solution. Another group of people choose the second solution. The second solution is narcissism. Psychosis is to say, maybe I alone am meaningless, but when I integrate into something bigger than myself, 
I acquire meaning via this belonging, via this integration. When I become a part of God, I acquire God's meaning, God's purpose, God's plan, God's goal. I become an agent of God by believing in God, by having faith. When I become a part of the nation state, I'm a citizen of that state. The state endows me with significance and meaning. So psychosis is about conflating and confusing your inner world, your inner landscape, your psychodynamics with an outside entity which is bigger than yourself and which in which you can be subsumed, which, which can consume you, which can assimilate you, with which you can merge and fuse. Psychosis is a codependent solution. The second group of people are narcissists. They choose a narcissistic solution. They say the source and the fount of meaning is me. I determine what is meaningful. I am the meaning. I am the significance. I am the source of everything that makes sense. I am the sense. It's a kind of Cartesian, Cartesian approach. I think, therefore I am. I am, it's the only certainty. I can't be certain about anything else, except the fact that it is I who is thinking. It's the only certainty in the universe. And because it's the only certainty in the universe, and any meaning and significance has to rely on certainty. You cannot derive meaning and significance from something that is shifting, kaleidoscopic, or meaningless in itself. You cannot derive meaning and significance from the uncertain. And if the only certainty is that you exist, then you are the meaning. You are the significance. The entire universe is meaningless without you. You endow it with meaning by virtue of your existence. And this is narcissism, where the average person would invent God, then project God, then externalize God, then objectify God, then make God into a distinct separate entity from which that average person, the creator actually, can derive meaning and significance. The narcissist stops short of this process of projecting and externalizing. He invents God, of course, it's called the false self, but then he, is, he becomes God, he merges with God, he becomes God. The narcissist is his own God, of course, and narcissism is a private religion. I dealt with this way of looking in, at narcissism in other videos. So this is the second solution. And the third solution is only for the strong-minded, not for the faint of heart. You need to be really, 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 really strong to accept that you are nothing, the universe is meaningless, the world is insignificant, it started nowhere and is going no place. There's no goal, no plan, no cause and no effect, there's only nothingness. To accept that you are nothing within nothingness requires inordinate resources of strength and resilience. And only extremely few individuals have reached this state of enlightenment. Because to accept this nothingness is to become enlightened. Some people mistakenly say that it means to suppress the ego. No, narcissists have no ego. You want to suppress the ego, you become a narcissist. Narcissists is the only group of people, only class of people without an ego. And indeed, if you look at many Indian so-called gurus and mystics and, and not to mention con artists, you can see the narcissists in them. They are narcissistic. The minute you suppress only the ego, you become narcissistic. You do not, suppressing the ego is not enough. You need to suppress the world and yourself in it. You need to not be. Nothingness is a solution of suspending and then eradicating your being, your existence. It's anti-existentialism. It's not nihilism, as, as Peterson repeatedly, mistakenly keeps calling it. 
it's nothingness. It's much closer, I would say, to Nirvana, if you want to borrow from Eastern mysticism or Eastern religions. It's a much closer state to Nirvana or Avidya, or, you know, these Eastern states where you actually disappear, vanish. Can one experience existence in this process of disappearing? When one disappears, can one then reappear in some other form? Of course not. This is a weak solution. And this is the solution, for example, of religious people. They disappear and then they reappear, integrated into a supreme power. Nothingness is the solution of the strong. Nothingness is not about destruction because destruction, destruction is an act of being. It's an existential act. To destroy is the mirror image of putting together. To put together and to destroy are the same actions. What does it matter if the brick is this way or this way? I'm not talking about destruction. I'm not talking about nihilism. I'm not talking about anarchism. I'm talking about not being. Not being. To accept this not being is a contradiction in terms because who will do the accepting who does the accepting if i'm telling you accept that you are nothing in a nothing meaningless pointless arbitrary capricious nothingness which you call universe the very demand is outlandish contradictory because I'm asking you to accept. I'm assuming that there's a you. So only the very, very strong and the very, very resilient and the very, very enlightened in the truest sense of the word can accept that they are not even in the position to accept nothingness. But I'll be shocked if there are more than 36 people like that in the world. According to Jewish mysticism. There are 36 people like this in the world. And I'll be shocked if there's, there's a, I'll be shocked if a 37th is found. Hell, I'll be shocked if there are 36 of them. It's very, very difficult. Nothingness is not about being a nobody, doing nothing all day and being late and justifying laziness and indolence. And Nothingness is not about everyone becoming Jeffrey, Jeffrey Lebowski, my favorite character. I'm in love with this guy. Uh, that's not nothingness. Nothingness is boundaries. Boundaries. What is a boundary? What is a healthy psychological boundary? It's the re realization that this is where I end and the world begins. This is where I cease to exist. This is where I stop and other people start. This is me. This is my privileged object. This is the self. And this is the world. This is internal. This is external. Boundaries is about ceasing to exist. Boundaries is about not being anymore. Boundaries is about recognizing that you can't be everywhere at the same time, that you have boundaries, that you, have, you are demarcated, that you are a limited, finite entity. Boundaries, is con boundaries, healthy boundaries, are concerned with your secession, with your end, with where you stop and cease and, and, and not be. Not be. It's about not being or unbeing in the German term. So therefore, boundaries, healthy boundaries, have to do with nothingness. In, in the psychotic solution, the identity is diffused, is destroyed. In the narcissistic solution, the identity becomes false, infinite. In the nothingness narrative, the identity is suspended. It's suspended not in the bad sense that it's not active, but it's suspended, like suspended in the air. It's, it's clear, it's identifiable, it's separate, it's hanging, it's, it's not enmeshed, it's not fused, it's not merged, 
It's not rapacious. It's not predatory. It's not inflationary. It's not deflationary. It's not diffuse. It's none of these things. It's simply there, suspended in midair. So we have boundaries which define where, where you end, where you cease to be, where you don't exist anymore. And the world starts and other people start. And you have a suspended identity, which is like a globule, a globule of tranquility. I think this is as close as one gets to nirvana, to true enlightenment. This is not a, a suspension of the ego or elimination of the ego. It's absolutely wrong way to look at it. When Indian mystical traditions are interpreted, they're interpreted to mean that you should destroy the ego, suspend the ego, get rid of the ego. That's absolutely not what they're saying. But they are talking about this, what I'm saying. The crystallization of you. The crystallization of you is distinct from the world. Divorcing the narcissistic narrative that you can swallow the world, digest the world, rape the world, kill the world. It's a dead narrative dead objects narrative, dead mother narrative, and getting rid of a psychotic narrative where you have to kill yourself, where you have to be the dead object so that the world can survive, so that you can be in the world. The only way for you to be in the world is by not, by not being, by, by not being totally, not, not at the boundary, but totally. These two are sick narratives. You need to find the balance. And the balance is a crystallized, well-defined, boundaried identity that is divorced from the world, divorced from the world, that recognizes the separateness of the world, recognizes the schism, recognizes the schism and break that happened early on, and yet, and yet, feels comfortable within itself, and thereby respects all other objects as similar. It's, like, it's as good a definition of empathy as I've ever come, come across. The self, in this case, doesn't cease to exist like in psychosis, doesn't become infinite and godlike like in narcissism, but it's calibrated, validated, but calibrated. Calibrated. There's this feedback mechanism, feedback loop, that makes sure that it's within the proper boundaries. When we, when we came up with the nation state, by the way, it's a very late invention, 19th century. When we came up with the nation state, suddenly it acquired a life of its own. And millions, tens of millions of people died defending it, protecting an internal object, object that was that suddenly became an external object. That's psychosis. When we invented God, millions of people died in his name. God is, was an internal object. And then suddenly it became externalized. That is a psychotic solution. So collectives also go through a psychotic phase followed by a narcissistic phase. The narcissistic phase is when the self, when the self becomes the overriding object, the totally inflated object, the infinite object. When the self usurps the role that other internal objects had before, like God, the self becomes God. When the self becomes more important than the state, when the self becomes more important than any collective, when the self becomes more important than your own family, when the self suddenly inflates to the point that it becomes the only object. We are living in this transition phase between psychotic narratives and narcissistic narratives because all our psychotic narratives failed. Religion failed, communism failed, Nazism failed, uh, capitalism failed, liberal democracy is failing, science is failing. Science is a, is a psychotic, of course, narrative. The science, worships, science worships reason, the same way religious people worship God. And it is the same structure, by the way. Paradigm shifts in science are within these confines. They, are not really, they don't really change the essence of science. <laughs> So, science is a psychotic script. And, and, and all these psychotic narratives failed us. And the elites that propagated and promulgated and promoted them had failed us and betrayed us. And so we are now moving to a narcissistic narrative 
a phase of narcissistic narrative in human history. And we see, look around you, people are becoming more and more selfish, more and more narcissistic, more and more self-contained, more and more self-sufficient. Technology is helping. Of course, we invent technologies to support the narrative. It's not an accident and it's not a coincidence that social media erupted on the scene only in the last 10 years. Because they have to cater to new narcissistic narratives. The role of sex, similarly, is modified. So, will we ever move to a nothingness narrative? Will we ever move to a healthy narrative where we know our boundaries, where we feel that our that where we feel comf confident and safe and calm and anxiety free with ourselves where we know the difference between self and world where we recognize the reciprocity and similarity and even identity of other objects like us other people will we ever come there this utopia i don't know uh, the Prophecy is not, not a part of my job description. What do you mean by nothingness? Are you trying to reduce us all to sheeple? Are you trying to establish the agenda of the elites to control us? To brainwash us? Are you colluding with the Illuminati <laughs> or Q, QAnon? I mean, the, the deep state? I mean, who are you? Who is paying you? to tell us to be nobodies and nothings. Well, that's a misunderstanding of my message. Nothingness is not about becoming a nobody. It's not about giving up on, 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 on your own personal life. Nothingness is giving up on pretensions, ambition, the rat race, giving up on other people's values, giving up on narcissism, giving up on grandiosity, giving up on constantly comparing yourself to others, on relative positioning, on the number of likes you're getting. Nothingness is nothingness in the social context. It's actually asserting yourself as an individual in the fullest sense of the word. It's like the child is a phase of separation and individuation from mother. Nothingness is a phase of separation and individuation from humanity, its foibles, its prejudices, its weaknesses, its biases, its 12 rules, or any number of rules. Nothingness is about becoming your own person. It is giving up, yes, on everything and anything that is not you, 100% you, unadulterated you. It's giving up rather than shaping up. Do not shape up. Do not conform. Do not become sheeple. On the contrary, the message is exactly the opposite. Do not accept what the elites are trying to sell you. Do not succumb to advertising, bombardment via social media, consumerism, and other ideologies, capitalist and, and other types of ideologies. Do not. Be you and only you. Become a nothing socialist so that you become everything individually. I hope this is much clearer now. If you are able to create supportive social networks of succor and love and empathy and engulfment and kindness, if you imbue your life with meaning going forward, if you structure, this is far more important than how rich you are, how famous you are, and what is your position among the other lobsters? Where you are in the world? Who is under you? Are you alpha male? How many people you control? How many lives you determine? That's a, that's a stupid game. Simply a stupid game. Important is, are you happy? You can be a multi-billionaire. You can be a president. You can be anything. A rock star. Are you happy? Are you happy? And what these people had discovered, there's much more happiness in nothingness than in somethingness. And that's my, that's been my message for a very long time now. I've made a few videos about it. Choose nothingness. Not in the sense that choose to become nothing. 
not in the sense of choose to abrogate your responsibilities, not in the sense of choose to disappear, give up on the world. No. Choose nothingness in the sense that you emphasize being and existence, that you fo your focus is internal, never external, that you don't derive any important internal functions from the outside, not your self-esteem, not your self-confidence, not your sense of self-worth, nothing. Become a self-contained, self-sufficient unit, not in the bad sense, like I don't need you, but in the good sense, in the good sense that I fulfill all my needs. Now, how can I help you? That's nothingness. Nothingness is not that you withdraw from the world. It's that you let the world withdraw from you. <laughs>